<clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Uh, I welcome you to Astridium Healthcare's earnings conference call for the third quarter of financial year 23. The company declared Q3 FI23 results last evening. I hope you got a chance to review them along with other materials which were posted on the stock exchanges and the company website. Today, to discuss the quarterly business performance and the future business outlook, we have the senior management team at Astridium Healthcare av available with us. It includes Dr. Azad Mupan, Chairman and, and Managing Director, Ms. Alisha Mupan, Deputy Managing Director, Mr. T.J. Wilson, Non-Executive Director, Mr. Amitabh Johri, CFO for GCC Operations, Mr. Sunil Kumar, CFO for India Operations. I would like to inform everyone about how we conduct this call. All external attendees will be in the listen-only mode for the duration of the entire call. We'll start the call with the opening remarks by management, followed by an interactive Q&A session. During the Q&A session, you will get a chance to ask a question by raising your hand by clicking on the raise hand icon in the Zoom application at the bottom of the window. We will call out your name, after which your line will be unmuted and you will be able to ask your question. We request you to please limit your questions to two, but not more than three per participant at, at the most at a time. Post the completion of your query being answered, we will lower your hand. Certain statements that may be discussed in the meeting that are not historical facts and might be forward-looking statements. Such forward-looking statements are subject to certain risks and uncertainties like government actions, local, political, or economic developments, technological risks, and many other factors that could cause the actual results to differ materially from those contemplated by the relevant forward-looking statements. Astridium Healthcare will not be in any way responsible for any action taken based on the statements and undertakes no obligation to publicly update these forward statements to reflect subsequent events or circumstances. With this, I will ask Dr. Mupan to start the, with the opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Bala. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining us for the earnings call for the third quarter of financial year 23. The COVID-19 pandemic fortunately is very well under control with improving herd immunity of the population worldwide. We hope and pray that uh, we won't have the challenge of a potent variant in future. It's very important that we remain vigilant about COVID as well as other infectious diseases, which are capable of playing havoc with health of world population, as we have seen. The International Monetary Fund recently published its forecast, painting a slightly less gloomy picture as inflation appears to have peaked in 2022, consumer spending remains so robust, and energy crisis following the Russia Russian invasion of Ukraine has been less severe than initially feared. That's not to say that outlook is rosy, as the global economy still faces major headwinds and a fall in growth from 3.4% in 2022 to 2009% this year before rebounding to 3.1% into 2024. However, it is relieving that IMF predicts the slowdown to be less pronounced than previously anticipated. As per IMF, growth in India is set to decline from 6.8% in 2022 to 6.1% in 2023, before picking up to 6.8% in 2024. With resilient domestic demand despite external headwinds, meaning India will remain the world's fastest growing major economy, both in 2023 as well as in 2024. With the thriving economy and our strategic initiatives, we are able to produce excellent revenues and profitability growth in India already, and we hope that we'll be able to continue that. The oil and non-oil sector in UAE continues to do well, with good growth being predicted in 2023, showing resilience in the face of global economic headwinds. UAE continues to be a preferred destination for business and people, but the saturation in the healthcare sector is producing demand supply issues in the sector, and that's reducing the growth. The interaction of corporate tax, uh, as well as the insurance-related issues, shall have an impact on the profit, profitability of business. One of the major opportunities in the GCC is the opening up of uh, Saudi Arabia and with large population and a thriving oil, uh, oil economy. Alicia will speak uh, more on this and uh, you, will, uh, uh, you can uh, hear more about this from her. 
Let me now discuss the financial performance of Astor for quarter three, financial year 23. At a consolidated level, we posted a revenue of 3,192 crores, which is an increase of 20% when compared with the same period last financial year. EBITDA was 449 crore when compared to 397 crore in financial year 22, an increase of 13%. EBITDA growth has impacted due to the loss from new hospitals in GCC. Adjusted for this loss, EBITDA was Rs. 468 crore, an increase of 15% over the last quarter, uh, over the last year, quarter three. Profit after tax post NCI stands at 110. 139 crore when compared to rupees 148 crore in quarter three of financial year 22. Uh, profit after tax, excluding losses for new hospitals, is 180 crore, a growth of 12%. The Aster India business continues to grow very well with the revenues growing at 25% to 771 crore and EBITDA increasing by 13% to rupees 115 crore and a profit after tax stood at 30 crores as compared to 27 crores in the financial year 22 with a growth of 11%. With respect to the GCC business, revenue grew 19% year on year to 2,421 crore and EBITDA grew 13% year on year to 334 crore as compared to 296 crore in the same period last financial year. Moving to the operational updates in the quarter, Aster India continues to have excellent growth as seen from the above numbers and is slated to grow further in the coming years. Some of our hospitals have reached almost full capacity and we are adding new beds in such areas. We are also setting up new hospitals in the geographies where Aster is the leading brand. The work on the new 200-bed Aster Hospital Kasarkod has begun. We are also in the process of adding 100 beds in Astra Hospital Kannur and 100 beds in Astra Hospital Astra Mid City Kochi because it's already working on almost full capacity. The work on the phase two of 275 bed Astra Whitefield Hospital in Bangalore is nearing completion and we shall soon be starting the construction of a phase one through 350 Astra Hos Capital Hospital in Trivandrum. One of the strategies we adopted is to add more beds by the OM model, OM asset light model to take healthcare to the suburban areas without incurring a lot of cost. In the last quarter, we added 150 beds at Tirupati, Andhra Pradesh, and we are adding another 100 beds this quarter in, uh, in Mandya, in Karnataka. The total number of beds added this financial year through this model in three asset light hospitals is 390 beds. We also acquired 100% share in Adrian IB Healthcare Private Limited through a subsidiary, Dr. Ramesh Hospitals, at a cost of just 1.6 crore. With this acquisition of 50 bed hospital, we now have a total capacity of 263 beds in Vijayawada and 913 beds in six hospitals in AP become the largest healthcare provider in the state with presence in Vijayawada, Gundur, Onkor, and Tirupati. We are adopting strategies to improve the revenue and margins in the state, including the acceptance of Ayurveda cases. Last year, we announced our intent to increase the stake in the profitable Malabar Institute of Medical Sciences, MIMS, subsidiary, a subsidiary which operates four hospitals in North Kerala with 1,464 beds. We have started the process and are hopeful to increase our stake from 74.14% to over 76% in coming months. Coming to other uh, uh, asset light businesses, as on 31st December 2022, we have a total of 239 Aster Pharmacy branded retail stores, 105 in Karnataka, 72 in Kerala, 60 in Telangana, and two in Andhra Pradesh which are operated by Alpha One Retail Pharmacies Private Limited. The Aster Labs uh, has established its presence in Karnataka, Kerala, Maharashtra, and Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, and Telangana. As of 31st December 2022, there are two reference labs, 18 satellite labs, and 157 patient experience centers. The restructuring of the lab uh, management with expansion of retail pharmacy outlets 
will enable us to establish Aster omni, omni channel ecosystem more effectively. I'm happy to let you know that Aster Health Academy, which was launched recently with the headquartered, uh, headquarters at Bangalore, shall be leveraging our internal capabilities and external resources to develop the next generation of healthcare leaders. Apart from managerial courses, the Academy is also developing a repository of clinical courses in collaboration with world-class healthcare providers. In GCC, uh, there were some challenges last quarter due to the losses from the new Aster Hospital Sharjah and Aster Hospital, Royal Hospital Muscat. Uh, these are temporary in nature and utilization of these hospitals is expected to increase in the coming quarters. The future opportunity in GCC is Saudi Arabia with a population of 30 million, which is equal to the combined population of all other GCC countries. We were struggling earlier with the Aster Sanat Hospital in Riyadh, which has now turned profitable with 10% uh, uh, plus EBITDA margin this financial year. We are looking at other opportunities, including the rolling out of a network of pharmacies. Alicia will talk to you more on uh, the GCC related matters. I wanted to inform you certain management changes which has happened during the quarter. Ms. Srinath Reddy has stepped down from the post of Group CFO on 5th January 2023, which was a planned activity on the basis of restructuring of the company, uh, which is in progress. That's a restructuring where we think that uh, the GCC and uh, India demerger or uh, the, uh, I mean, uh, the structure will change. Going forward, the GCC finance matters shall be looked after by Mr. Amidab Johri, who is presently the CFO for GCC, as well as the India part shall be looked after by Mr. Sunil Kumar, who is presently CFO of India. Accordingly, both of them shall be addressing you on both geographies today, and they will be available for any queries now as well as in future uh, regarding the investment-related matters. The investor relations position, which was vacant, has been filled up by a highly experienced senior IR professionals who would be joining us in April. We would also be responsible, he will also be responsible for our m and activities in India. We have begun the process of selecting the CEO for India and expect to have the position filled within the next few, uh, next uh, two months. Status of the restructuring. We have been updating you about the progress of the restructuring process. While we have shared in the past that board formed a subcommittee on March 22nd and appointed investment bankers in June 22nd, we had reached out to the potential investors. Uh, who had reached out to the potential in invest investors? The company's investment bankers have received interest and indicative terms for potential uh, buyers of Gulf uh, cooperative council region business. The investment bankers are working actively with the potential buyers on terms and their advisors are conducting due diligence on the GCC business. The investment bankers have communicated that binding bids are likely to be received in the quarter one of financial year 2023-2024. Upon submission of the final evaluation by the investment bankers, the board shall review the proposal of sale of the company's business in GCC. Appropriate intimations and impact uh, disclosures will be made as and when any conclusions are arrived at and, up, at and approved by the board. I now request Deputy Managing Director Alisha Mopen to elaborate more on GCC business, the digital transformation, and other strategic initiatives undertaken by Aster. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning, everyone. As Chairman mentioned, we are seeing the COVID receding and UAE is seeing an increased traffic of visitors and return of expats who had moved out during the COVID period. The overall numbers of GCC, it has seen a revenue increase of 19% on the revenue and 13% on the EBITDA over the last year. The GCC business uh, EBITDA, excluding the operational losses from the new hospitals commission during this period, is 468 crores, which is a growth of 15%. If you look at it at a segmental level, the hospital revenues during the quarter three, it increased by 22% year on year. We expected the hospital business to grow larger, especially with the installation of the new beds of Sharjah and Oman. Um, but the empanelment of the new facilities has been a little bit more extended and delayed than we had anticipated. 
this is the intense negotiation that is a reality of an fully insured market that we are facing. Uh, we want to make sure that we get the right contracts and the right rates in place for large facilities and big infrastructure that we're building up. So while we were hoping that most of this will be done uh, by the end of Q3, this has gotten a little bit more delayed than we had anticipated. But we know that we will be seeing much larger growth as these impediments are complete. The retail business, on the other hand, actually saw an increase in revenue of 36%, and that, that kind of lends itself to the focus we've had on increasing uh, non-insurance business in the clinics. Uh, and also on the clinics, we are seeing the core revenue, which is excluding the PCR, uh, showing an increase of more than 35%. On the business updates, as Chairman mentioned, we are, uh, we are kind of laying the foundation for Saudi in a big way. We are working on all the regulatory approval to set up the joint, uh, joint venture with our partners, Al Care Group. Uh, we are expecting to set up our first facilities in Q1 23 24. Uh, our plan for the first year is to have 50 pharmacies being rolled out, uh, and things are working according to the plan so far. We also launched uh, a Wealth, which is a hub of integrated medicine in UAE, which was in November last year. This was again to move towards a more wellness initiative within the UAE um, to, to help people lead more healthier lives, alleviate chronic lifestyle diseases, and also help them prevent hereditary afflictions. Wealth is managed by Medicare and has a whole wide range of services, which includes anti aging, regenerative medicine consultation, addiction management, prevention, uh, osteopathic uh, chiropractor, and a fully integrated wellness hub. It, uh, this, would, this also includes DNA testing, chronic disease management, and actually is a completely new venture within the Medicare vertical. On the Asta Pharmacy front, which is the retail arm, we have uh, entered into a strategic partnership with UAE's largest online food delivery and e-commerce platform, Calaba, to bring prescription medicines directly to the front door of patients in Dubai. Post-COVID, what we are seeing is an increased activity of delivery of medicines. Uh, but we wanted to extend it one step further to enable prescription delivery with this aggregator partnership. Under the strategic pact, acts to pharmacy customers, they can upload their, uh, uh, the Talabad customers can upload their medical prescriptions securely and easily through the Talabad app to make the prescription medicine purchases beginning 1st February, 2023. This partnership is designed to save consumers time and money in line with Dubai's vision to provide the highest quality of specialized and accessible healthcare to its community members by pursuing efficiency, appropriate allocation, and utilization of resources. It aims to create a complete ecosystem of care that fully utilizes the latest technologies to enhance patient-centered care and ensure medication com adherence compliance in line with ACDM's mission to improve accessibility to healthcare. As Chairman mentioned, we have made uh, good strides as far as our digital health ambition is concerned. Uh, our app, My Asset, has seen significant traction in the third quarter. We're currently ranked number one free medical app in the UAE, both in the Apple Play Store, Apple Store, as well as the Google Play Store. We're currently at around 220,000 downloads, uh, which is up from 86,000 uh, in the last quarter. Both the consultation and the e-pharmacy services that are live on the platform has, has seen significant growth during this time. Now, the major improvements that were made was smoother appointment bookings, quicker search, conversion-focused product listing, and product detail pages, all of which was done on the basis of consumer research and feedback, which we obtained in our pilot days. In the third quarter, we had more than 38,000 appointments booked through MyAster. We had nearly 1 million transactions on the app, a combination of appointment booking as well as e-pharmacy uh, orders. Uh, this number has continued to scale since the e-pharmacy orders has increased 150% month on month. Our non-prescription orders on our digital channels have also grown by 2x in comparison to the prior quarters, and this is continuing to scale as well. The home delivery business continues to trend more than 10 million dirhams on an average per month. We are working on improving our efficiency of our rider base using state-of-the-art technology, which will help us to scale the digital orders without a major increase to our cost base. I will now request our GCC CFO Amitabh Jori and India CFO Sunil Kumar to take you through the details of the 
financial and segmental performance of the quarter. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Uh, on a consolidated basis, our uh, revenue from operations for the quarter is rupees uh, 3,192 crores. It's an increase of 20% on year on year basis. Uh, consolidated EBITDA for the quarter was at rupees 449 crores, uh, as against 397 crores, which is again a growth of 13%. Uh, this quarter also saw operational losses from three new businesses in GCC, uh, namely Astro Hospital, Sharjah, uh, Astro Sunapur, Astro Royal Muscat, and one India hospital, uh, that is the mother hospital, Ariko. Uh, this impacted the quarter's EBITDA. So uh, excluding the losses from these new losses, the EBITDA stands at rupees 468 crores as against uh, rupees 406 crores during the same period uh, of the last financial year, which is a growth of 15%. Uh, consolidated PAT post NCI is at rupees 139 crores as compared to rupees 148 crores in Q3 of FI22, excluding losses from new hospitals, uh, as I called out earlier, uh, the PAT post NCI stands at 182, 180 crores. Coming to the nine months performance, the revenue from operations stood at rupees 8,671 crores. It's a growth of 15% compared to the same period last financial year. EBITDA for this period was at 1,060 crores compared to 1,021 crores in uh, FI22 nine months. Uh, excluding the losses from the new hospitals, GCC and India, the EBITDA was at 1,123 crores, which is a growth of 9%. Uh, PAT post NCI was at rupees 254 crores compared to rupees 300 crores in the FI, the 22 nine month period. Uh, excluding the losses from new hospitals and one time other income, the PAT stood at 346 crores, which is 11% growth over the same period last year. Specific on the revenue from GCC operations was at 2,421 crores. It's an increase of 19% on year-on-year -year basis. Uh, previous year had significant COVID revenue, which makes some of the revenue and EBITDA numbers as not comparable. Q3 for the last year had almost 207 crores of uh, COVID revenue. Uh, the core business revenue growth, excluding this core testing, was 32% on year-on-year -year basis. EBITDA from GCC operations stand at rupees 334 crores as against rupees 296 crores in quarter three of FI22. Excluding losses of new hospitals in GCC, the EBITDA stands at rupees 350 crores in Q3 FI23, which is a growth of 15%. Coming to the segmental reporting, as Alicia had called out that performance for the quarter has been good. Uh, the GCC hospital revenue was at 1,059 crores an increase of 22% on year on year basis, and the EBITDA stands at rupees 171 crores compared to rupees 141 crores in FI22 Q3. It's a growth of 21% year on year basis. Uh, excluding the losses from new hospitals, the hospital segment had an EBITDA of 188 crores. Uh, the adjusted EBITDA margin for losses from new hospital was at 18.1%. GCC clinic revenue stands at rupees 662 crores, an increase of 4% year on year. Normalized for COVID testing, the core business of the clinic segments saw a healthy growth rate of 35% in this quarter. Uh, it's also resumption of normal business from a GCC perspective. EBITDA for GCC clinic segment stands at rupees 142 crores, which is at a 21.5% margin. Uh, GCC pharmacies revenue increased 36% year on year basis on the back of our new initiatives like e pharmacy, home delivery, and new stores being opened. Uh, from a revenue of a 608 crores to rupees 829 crores on account of additional sales have been generated in this quarter. If it increased from rupees 72 crores to 98 crores, it's an increase of 29%. If it a margin for this segment is at 11.9%. Uh, the GCC net debt stands at 203 crores at 30, uh, as of 31st December, compared to 197 mil uh, USD. Sorry, I stand corrected. GCC net debt stands at USD 203 million as of 31st December 22, compared to USD 197 million as of 31st December, uh, 31st March 22. 
Now I request the CFO of India Operations, Mr. Sunil Kumar, to take you through the India performance during the period. Uh, thank you, Amitabh. Good morning, everyone. For the quarter ended 31st December 2022, uh, India revenues have increased to rupees 771 crores, up by 25 percentage from 618 crores in Q3 of FI22. EBITDA from India operations uh, have increased to rupees 115 crores with EBITDA margin of 15 percentage compared to 102 crores in Q3 of FI22 with a growth of 13 percentage. Excluding the losses from the new hospital, Astra Mother Hospital, Ari Code, EBITDA is at uh, rupees 118 crores in Q3 of 523 with the year on year growth of 16 percentage. For the nine months performance, the revenue from operations stands at 2,179 crores with the growth of 23 percentage compared to 1,776 crores for nine month FI22. EBITDA from India operations stands at uh, rupees 326 crores with a margin of 15 percentage in nine month FI23 compared to rupees 275 crores in nine month FI22 with a growth of 19 percentage. Excluding the losses from the new hospital, EBITDA is at 336 crores in nine month FI23 with a growth of FI uh, growth of 22 percentage compared to nine month FI22. PAT post NCI is at rupees 99 crores compared to rupees 14 crores in nine month FI22 with a growth of 104 percentage year on year. With respect to segmental performance, revenue from India hospitals and clinics stands at rupees 735 crores in Q3 FI23 with a growth of 20 percent year on year. EBITDA stands at rupees 132 crores with a margin of 18 percentage in Q3 FI23 as compared to 110 crores in Q3 FI22 with a 20 percent growth in year on year. Excluding the new hospital, the EBITDA stands at 135 crores in Q3 FI23 with a year on year growth of 23 percentage. As to India, net debt stands at rupees 455 crores as on 31st December 22 compared to rupees 319 crores as at 31st March 22. The capital expense for the nine month uh, period uh, is at uh, rupees 190 crores. On that note, I conclude my remarks. We would be very happy to answer any questions that you may have. I now request Balchandra to open the question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. Uh, I would request the attendees to uh, click on the raise hand button okay, for, uh, to get in the queue for the questions. Uh, meanwhile, I think I already see a couple of uh, attendees having their hands up. So I would request uh, uh, Nikhil Chandak uh, to raise the first question. Nikhil, you will be able to unmute uh, your... Nikhil, you can unmute your mic and you can ask your question. Mr. Nikhil Chandak. Uh, Mr. Nikhil Chandak, are you able to unmute and uh, speak? Can you please go ahead and speak? Okay, so there may be some technical difficulties. I would request the second uh, question list, Nikhil Mathur, uh, to ask this question, please. Um, hi, I'm Hello. Yeah, hi. Yes, audible, right? Yes, you're audible. Yeah, hi. Good morning, everyone. Um, uh, two, three questions I had. Uh, the first question is on the losses currently sitting in the zero to three year maturity profile hospitals. Um, if I look at GCC and India combined, this this loss in nine months at EBITDA level is around 66 crores. Um, given the planned bed additions in FI24, uh, do you expect this losses to further go up or, or, or you are now reaching a stage where some of the losses are still start getting absorbed with incremental revenue? Um, so we might be entering a phase of flattish losses from these maturity profile hospitals. <clears throat> Yeah. So, uh, Amitabh, you would like to take it up for GCC and uh, Sunil for India? Sure. Sure, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so, hi, Nikhil. Thank you for the question. Uh, so, if you look at from a GCC perspective, as we had called out, there are three hospitals that have been opened recently. Uh, we're having operating losses, at least for quarter three. Uh, Alicia had alluded to some, some of the impoundments that are open. 
uh, which we expect to come sometime between quarter four of this financial year and quarter one of next financial year, which is FI24. Uh, assuming that happens, it will allow us to start reducing the losses. And we expect that by at least quarter three or quarter four of next financial year, we should start seeing neutrality coming in, in terms of initial losses reducing significantly. Uh, that is on the profile of these three hospitals that uh, had called. Uh, Sunil, can I request you to pick up the Indian Yeah, question. just just one follow up here. What is the planned bed addition in GCC in FI24? So we are looking at uh, incremental beds of almost uh, 150, so as close to 210, 220 beds right now. Uh, when I say that 220 beds, this is between uh, an annex building that is coming up in Saudi. That's around 50, uh, 659 beds that are there. And incrementally, we are looking at another facility coming up in uh, Dubai, where we have taken a fully fitted out facility for creating a multi-speciality hospital. So, uh, Nicole, just to add to what Amitabh said, the two new the two new hospitals which would be coming up in FI24, one of them will not have this insurance issues because it's already an extension. It's an extension of the existing facility, so there's no empanelment that is required for that. The other hospital will only be commissioned by Q4 of uh, 2024. I mean, Q uh, Q1 of 24, basically January uh, around January time next year. So we again will not see losses of that unit for this coming year. So uh, as Anita mentioned, we expect the losses of these three hospitals to flatten out with the increasing revenue and increasing occupancy by Q3 this year. Sure. <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, thank you, Nikhil. India bit of it, uh, see zero to three years, we have about only two hospitals, uh, specifically Astra Mother Hospital, Aricode and uh, Whitefield Hospital. That's specific in the Whitefield Hospital, we've got three blocks, you know, A, B, and C. Only the current operational is the women and children block, uh, where uh, losses are hardly anything there. So whatever the losses which you're seeing is majority contributed by Mother Hospital, Ari Code. And this is being a o and model, we don't expect that loss to continue the next year, you know. So uh, that is one bit of it. From the next year point of view, uh, the major hospital which is going to get operational is only Aster uh, Whitefield, A and B block with 275 beds. And as you know, that's a bigger capacity with a, a full-fledged multi-specialty, including oncology, which we are commencing. So loss is going to be, uh, you know, uh, you know, in a good number. But at the same time, uh, that is the only uh, hospital which is coming up uh, immediately. And what we see is other addition of beds is going to come up only in the o &M projects, where we don't expect any major losses. So with that being in the keeping in the picture, we don't expect a huge losses in the coming years. That's going to be very minimal. Whatever you're seeing there. Uh, so in and around that number should be there. Sure. Um, the second question I had was on uh, your initiatives on the pharmacy side in India. Um, uh, how many stores are you planning in India in the next 12 months, 24 months? And a question tied to that is that uh, we have seen a couple of companies now listed, uh, Metlers and, and Apollo, having a very sizable presence in the south, south, southern market uh, of India and also expanding into West. Um, being the third big uh, entrant on the organized side, uh, uh, I mean, isn't it a bit 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 late in, 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 in the game because you already have a fairly established market on the pharmacy side and then you have two incumbents. So how easy or difficult would it be to kind of uh, make a presence in it, uh, as a third player in this market? So uh, Nikhil, I'll answer the first part of that and a second part of that and uh, uh, Sunil will answer about the numbers, uh, the number of units and all. So strategically, what we thought is that uh, unlike other players who are much larger and much bigger, we are not looking at catching up on these numbers. What we are looking at are two things. One, an ecosystem to be created between our hospitals, pharmacies, labs, and home care, which will, uh, with the MyAster app, which is now launched in uh, GCC, coming into India in the next six to eight months, this will tie up the patient and all the requirements of the patient. We have been talking talking about the omni-channel, which we hope that is the difference that we can provide. Unlike other providers, of course, or some of our provide, I mean, competitors or peer group have got that, but not to this level that we are looking at where we are tying this up. So for that, it is important that we have the pharmacies also. 
So if you look at the geographies where we are rolling out, this is not pan-India. We are looking at geographies where we already have hospitals and we can extend that whereby, for example, a patient who is discharged, giving the medicines from the pharmacies around or doing the lab test on the labs are there and uh, even the home care post-discharge. So we want to create, one, the brand to have a wider presence and second, to provide the patients that care. So number-wise, we are not going to be anywhere near that and that is the most important thing. The second part which we are trying, uh, we are again not looking at uh, the, uh, I mean, uh, the, uh, the profits which are coming up from the actual medicine supply and all. We are looking at our own white-labeled products. We have this advantage of having the GCC business where we have large number of white-labeled products. We are also trying to get this benefit in India where we will be now looking at having white-labeled products which are much more profitable when compared to the normal medicines. And we know that's a cutthroat competition with huge, huge discount and all. We don't want to go into that online or offline players, but we'll be looking at having a better margin through the white label products. Uh, Sunil will tell about the numbers, Sunil. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chairman. Adding on to that, Nikhil, uh, number-wise, we already had 239 pharmacies and we are expecting to close the year with around 262 to 70 pharmacies. And uh, next one year, we are looking in the you know, range of 125 to 150 pharmacies is what uh, we look at at least in every year we want to add up. You know, that's a number bit of it. Sure. And, and one more question, if I may just squeeze in. Uh, the ONM model, uh, I understand it is more for India that we're talking about 330 bit additions. Um, can you give some sense on what's the bit up a bit that you are targeting from this ONM model? I mean, I think... Uh, in India, you are at uh, 24, 25 lakhs EBITDA per bed, uh, basis last quarter number. So any sense on how the EBITDA per bed can look like in, in, in this ONM model? Sunil, you want to answer that? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Nikhil. More than EBITDA per bed, I would like to give on the margin bit of it. See, uh, in this ONM model, right? We are uh, you know that we are putting in tire to tire three cities. That means our pops are going to be lower. Second is that we are not, uh, we're going to treat these scheme patients also, you know, because the volume is the key there. So considering all those things and also the CapEx investment is very low. That means to say we're getting the existing hospital with the uh, most of the equipment being there and our investment on the, uh, what do you call, you know, equipments will be less. I'm talking about five to 10 lakh rupees per bed. So keeping that in mind, uh, my revenue share will be on higher end. And here we look at a margin somewhere between around 15 percentage. You know, so that's a number we're looking at. We're not looking at a, uh, what we are in other hospitals wherein we are 20% above, 25% above. So that margins we're not looking at. It will be lower margin, but a higher ROC. That's what we expect here. Uh, so in terms of accounting, you will book book proportionate revenues and or, or, or it would be a management fee. What would you be booking? No, uh, it's not a management fee. Just like other owned models, we book the complete revenue and complete uh, profitability. The whole accounts will be running by us. And we instead instead of we charging a management fee, we give a revenue share to the landlord. Okay. And, and where is that ex, uh, expensed out, the revenue share to the landlord? Uh, that will come as your uh, normal you know, rent, uh, basically, and the EBITDA and EBITDA, right? So rent, below, rent a, below, okay. It will be treated as a, as a lease, right? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Okay, understood. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Nikhil. Uh, the next question is from Amrish Kakar. Uh, can you please, uh, Amrish, can you please unmute and uh, go ahead and ask your question? Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, my first question is just a follow up on the ONM question. Uh, so I think the strategic rationale has been explained uh, quite quite clearly. We also understand uh, for, for our own brownfield and greenfield what the future expansion looks like. Could you help me to understand how should I think about what the additions on beds could be looking out uh, two, three, four years into this uh, into the ONM model? No, what was that question? Last part of it that how, I didn't. How, how do I think about uh, what is the capacity, incremental capacity for ONM hospitals? Yeah. Uh, going forward. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we uh, think that we will be able to add uh, around 500 beds in a year through this model. This year, we already have reached 390 beds or so. And we have one hospital which is in a closure state. So what we do is that we do a thorough DD. And we want to have all the requirements like the legal as well as uh, other uh, statutory requirements being met. Then only we enter into that. We have 
at least 15, 20 in consideration, but we make it very, very uh, clear that we will enter only if all the requirements are being met. So at least one more hospital, we hope that we'll be able to do it this year or early next year, first quarter of next financial year. So answering your question, we are talking about uh, adding about 500 uh, beds uh, in a year. And the best part of that is that, like what uh, Sunil was mentioning, our total cost for this is so low and uh, that is going to have a high impact on our ROC. And, and this is a medium term. I mean, we can think about this 500 beds a year for medium term, yeah. not just yeah. uh, next year. Yeah. Uh, the second question is just trying to understand a little bit more on the pharmacy and labs uh, profitability. So we, we do uh, now show the numbers, uh, EBITDA and revenue numbers split out. Uh, and if my understanding is correct, the pharmacy business should, because it's run by a third party, uh, we should not be having a lot of losses in that. So is it mainly the labs that uh, that has a negative EBITDA? Could you have to understand, explain that a little bit? Sunil? Yeah, uh, thank you, Amrish. Uh, what you said is exactly right, right? Um, so whatever we're giving the segmental uh, portion that covers only the labs and wholesale pharmacy. And uh, as you know, pharmacies are managed by another company called as ERPTL. So we don't consolidate the numbers, but uh, capture the uh, wholesale revenue out of it. And as rightly said, uh, 80 to 90 percent of the uh, losses which are sitting there, that is uh, contributed by Astro Labs. You're right. Thank you very much for that. Just uh, to and... extend that, I also wanted to just, uh, Amrish, I wanted to add that the labs we have done a restructuring earlier. This was being run as a vertical across uh, all the geographies. Now we have <clears throat> aligned it with our individual uh, hospital clusters. So this has produced significant impact because now that ecosystem has started working and that is producing one increased awareness as well as sale. Second, the cost also has come down. So we hope that by maybe in six months to nine months, we'll be able to go into a break even on the lab side. That is our hope that at least by next year, we'll be able to, towards the third quarter, we'll be able to go into a, I mean, break even state in the lab. Thank you. And if I may just slip a quick question in on the debt, uh, how should we think about the debt evolution in India? It's, uh, uh, net debt? Yeah, Sunil? So, uh, Amrish, on net debt, uh, you know, excluding the lease liabilities, right, we should be in the yeah. range of around 2 is to 1 ratio. Two, you know, around a net debt ratio would be around uh, 2. That's what we are looking at. Even now, also, we are at just, I think, uh, 1.6 or 1.7. So considering that, you know, the CapEx, uh, what we already communicated around 190 crores have spent and in the current financial year, we are, because Whitefield is going to get operational and majority of medical equipments are going to be uh, purchased in the last quarter. So we see that, you know, CapEx growing to more than 250, 300 crores. So, and as per the previous guidance we've given, we expect to incur around 250 to 300 crores going forward also, considering we've got almost 1,800 1, beds in pipeline. So keeping all this in mind, we will be able to keep that ratio net debt to a bit of excluding lease liabilities Even below around two uh, is what we are, what I see. Thank you very much and all the best. Thank you, Amrish. Uh, the next question is from Sham. Uh, Sham, if you can uh, go ahead and ask your question, please. Yeah, uh, good morning and thank you for taking my question. Uh, just a question, just like from last quarter, I think the Andhra Telangana region, if there is an update, because that seems to be the one underperforming cluster in the India business. So, you know, do you think that fiscal 23, it's going to be difficult and maybe we rebase and look at 24 as the earliest when this this business can grow? Exactly. So that's what we are also trying. While this quarter may see some improvement in the margins as well as overall profitability, but we hope that with the changes that we have brought in, including the bringing some of the aerogas related hospitals, which we were losing out, that was a strategic failure which happened on and up two three years back. But the COVID revenues filled it up. But now we are thinking that with that also coming into the picture we'll be able to go, go to that uh, pre-COVID levels of uh, uh, profitability. So you are absolutely right uh, with this, uh, uh, I mean, changes. We hope that it will go into a, uh, I mean, uh, the earlier levels as well as to the uh, uh, EBITDA as well as revenues going up. Uh, Dr. Mopin, just, just probing here, you know, when you look at the historical 
let's assume fiscal 22 or 21 margins, uh, maybe COVID, I'm looking only Andhra Telangana cluster, mm -hmm. so margin 16 or 19%, right? Do you think that can't be achieved, right? Or, or should we look at a fiscal 20 where 15% is the right number to go by? Yeah, so I uh, will rather go for that 15% in the near future, next financial year, and then uh, we hope that we'll be able to go beyond that uh, in the as we go forward. Yes, what you said is right. Got it, sir. Helpful. The second question is on the GCC pharmacy. Uh, I think pretty solid numbers, uh, you know, for this quote. I think there is an acceleration uh, even when I look at uh, YOI growth, Q2 versus Q3 also. So what's uh, what's driving that uh, acceleration? Is it is it additions of a new pharmacy and rollout or is it just the same store also growth seeing pretty strong? Alicia, you would like to answer that. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Sham. So uh, it's it's a combination. Uh, what we've only, we haven't added too many new stores, so there is a lot of focus on same store growth itself. Uh, I think we have been changing the assortments. Uh, we've been increasing sort of like what Chairman was saying, our own products, sale of our own products. Uh, we've been working on our wholesale and distribution business, where our products are now in the supermarket and the duty free. So there's been a whole range of effort to sort of make sure there's a more balance between prescription and non-prescription uh, dispensation. Uh, and, and so it's not really just new store uh, additional growth. Uh, we, I think we added around 30, 30, 30 pharmacies last year. Uh, Amita, if you want to just so, Risha, the last quarter, we have added only 12 pharmacies. No, the whole nine months for this year. Nine months will be our 30 odd pharmacies. So, it's not that much. In fact, uh, just to add on to what Shah and uh, Alicia said, in the initial months, we don't see too much of a sales boost coming from the new pharmacies. So, it's more around the operational efficiencies and the whole dispensation and the cataloging that we have done that has allowed us to uh, gather more sales volumes. So, Sham, I just wanted to chip in here. So, one of the things which Alicia mentioned in her speech was the MyAster app and the home delivery. So, this yeah. has a definite impact on that. And we hope that this will be the driver as we go forward. And that is going to be one of the major areas of focus for the company to go into that area of digitalization as well as you know, the e-commerce space. Got it. Just last follow up uh, is just the dilution in the margins when I look at nine month or even quarter three over last year. Uh, is it the investments that is leading to dilution in margins? And we should look towards, say, at some point of time, margins to be at least stable in this uh, segment? You're talking about the pharmacy, Asia? Yes, 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 Alicia. Yeah, so some of it is the new investments. And like uh, Ken said, as we are building up the my Asta platform, we obviously have had, uh, uh, you know, we are, we're doing some free deliveries, uh, all of that to kind of increase the scale up and adoption of the, of the, uh, of the platform itself. Uh, but we expect it to sort of stabilize to what it was at the 9-10 percentage. But we really wanted to ensure that we are able to kind of push on the adoption. But we also wanted to do, do it without losing any money, not just go with uh, uh, with making it negative, but there's a slight dilution in margin you're seeing because of that increase. And the last data point, what's the private label sales now? Uh, and how has that been trending? It's roughly around 15%. So we're seeing a good improvement on that, which used to be around 11%. Got it. Yeah. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. The, uh, the next question is from uh, Nikhil Chandra. Nikhil, if you can try and uh, unmute yourself and ask. Yeah, you. I think finally I can unmute. Uh, thanks. So, you know, I had just one question uh, and this was on the GCC restructuring. Uh, you know, I did see the comment in the notes to the account that you were expecting certain bids, etc. in the first quarter of next financial year. You know, uh, what I wanted to check is at least if you can share what is the broad thought process. Now, you know, this initiative has been on for more than a year, if I if I recollect. So I'm sure you broadly have a structure in mind. What I wanted to check is, are you looking at a complete exit of the GCC business and delinking the Indian listed entity from the GCC business? Or do you envisage a structure where 
the indian entity continues to hold a part shareholding in the gcc business and the third leg is if you are exiting the gcc business completely i am sure you would have some thought process on what do you do with the cash do you put it into capex do yeah you are breaking breaking up dividends nikhil, nikhil the uh, it's breaking up i think some more concrete information on this will help because you know depressing the the valuations of the listed stock yeah no uh, so i can can you, can you yeah so nikhil can, uh, uh, maybe you may have to just mute a bit there is some line disconnect some, i think some uh, echo coming nikhil so i will <clears throat> give you some insights into that one uh, one part i can tell you that uh, if this is going ahead as the board is uh, decided that or going ahead it will be a complete segregation between the gcc and india so it will be uh, a sale of the gcc business by india listed company so that is what i can give a clarity on so that is what we have asked for this uh, or the company is uh, appointed the investment bankers who have got bids for uh, buying the gcc business from the listed company uh, so that part i just wanted to clarify then the other parts how this money is going to be used when it comes to india uh, how is it going to be dividended out or used for expansion i don't want to go into that because the board has not decided how to do that but it will be as you know a significant amount which will be appropriately used as per the board's direction as we go forward perfect um, at least so yeah no so so at least that is clear that there is no cross holding because that's uh, you know that will not be great for a shareholder so at least there's no cross holding between indian listed entity and whatever uh, you know gcc or or, or the, that's the eventual plan yeah nikhil that's you are absolutely right that is very clear uh, perfect, to the board, perfect. as well as uh, whatever is happening now is for a complete clear cut off between the two two perfect and my and my second question no that's very reassuring thank you and my second question was you know how do we take the take the india business uh, you know uh, uh, in the other parts of the of the country is there a plan or do you still plan to be primarily a south focused uh, uh you know business or is there a plan to kind of you know go towards say west or north central because the south has the most number of organized uh, hospital chains at this point of time so is are you seeing competitive intensity increasing in the south region or is it still a market where growth can come through for say the next 3 to 5 years and uh, resultantly do you see the need to go to other regions more aggressively than what you've done so far yeah so uh, we have uh, now uh, been in the south like what you know uh, but there are areas in south south india where we have not gone into it. for example in tamil nadu where we are now trying to uh, start off with uh, something in uh, in chennai where we are looking for a hospital to be established but uh, we have not identified the right land and but so i am telling you that tamil nadu is a large opportunity but beyond that as we feel that there is more of saturation we always have the uh, desire to go into other parts of india whether it is uh, northeast whether it is north whether it is other parts of india we definitely will be looking at it as uh, india is a huge opportunity and as we have the bandwidth uh, develop the bandwidth and we have the confidence that we will be able to put it all together we definitely will look at that so this can happen in many ways it can be organic inorganic like what you were talking about no the money coming into india maybe or maybe it's mnta so we'll have to look at that but we have the significant plans for india as we go forward okay great thank you so much thank you thank you nikhil uh, if there are any other questions if the attendees can raise your hand that will be helpful Yeah. Yes, Rahul. Please go ahead and uh, ask your question. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, hi. So, uh, just my question was just in regards to any outlook or guidance for the next financial year for the business as a whole, in terms of revenue or EBITDA margins. What are you expecting? What are your targets? 
So, uh, Nikhil, we don't give any guidance regarding the revenue and uh, profits. Uh, that's, uh, as you know, we uh, can't do that. And while we have some internal projections and all, we can't uh, see, tell the market what it is. But we see significant opportunities in India as well as in GCC. Like what has been mentioned in the initial part of this, uh, we are seeing the growth is very good in India. We hope that this will continue on the same pace. Even in GCC, there has been good growth. There have been some uh, headwinds, like no, not headwinds actually, some losses which were incurred by our hospitals. Two hospitals coming on stream all of a sudden, which has have some impact. But we hope that this financial year will be having. And beyond that, also Saudi also we mentioned. So we see the growth uh, uh, going forward uh, to be at a, uh, I mean, same or. Uh, more better place as we go forward, the, everything including the revenue, EBITDA, everything to be at a better place. Nikhil. Oh, okay, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you and all the best. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Rahul. Uh, the next question is from Naman Bansali. Naman, please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, my first question relates to the India business. So currently we have some 4,000 capacity beds and we are looking to add another 1,800 beds by FY25 or 26 as per our latest presentation. So I just wanted to know the strategy here that are we looking to pause at any some uh, point of time and realize the full potential of our business in terms of margins and leverage uh, on the India side. So this is my first question. And second is on the GCC clinic side. So the overall revenue uh, has a 4% growth uh, on a, a YOY basis. And I see the revenue per outpatient, if I try to calculate, it has risen significantly versus a YOY number. So as uh, on a YOY basis, the revenue is largely flat and the outpatient seems largely at a decent growth at 7, 8%. But the revenue per outpatient seems a a uh, uh, big inflated number. So can you just uh, put some picture on that? Yeah. So the first part uh, I will answer and the second part, uh, uh, Alisha or uh, um, uh, Amitabh will answer that. So uh, it's not that we are going to grow, uh, uh, I mean, uh, just for adding beds. Uh, these are all uh, strategic decisions which have been taken. Some of these are expansion of our hospitals where we know that immediately that will get filled up and we'll have significant benefit coming out of that. For example, what we are doing in our Kannur Hospital or Astromed City. And as well as what we have seen is that in our own geography, I'm, I'm, our main geography, Kerala, as soon as we start a hospital, it gets filled up because of the brand, uh, uh, the uh, trust of people in the brand because of the large presence there. So uh, what you will see is, is that the large part of these bets are going to be in a geography where we hope that uh, this will get uh, immediately go into a break even. You may be aware that our Kannur Hospital, when we started uh, four years back, went into a break even, uh, cash break in within uh, uh, eight months or less than a year. So uh, definitely we will be concerned to add more bets and just to put CapEx into that. But only if we are confident that this can give a decent return on investment without much of delay, we will do that. But there are some strategic areas where we have to look at, like, for example, I mentioned about Tamil Nadu as we go forward. These are all things which we will be taking a call depending on our, uh, I mean, our, uh, I mean, uh, the EBITDAs and the debt to net EBITDA. We'll be looking at that and taking a call. But uh, part of this growth also is coming from uh, businesses which doesn't require too much of uh, CapEx, like the CapEx light model, uh, which is uh, 500 bets is what that we hope that we'll be able to add every year. So uh, I know that the challenge is to have the growth at the same time, no? not to spend too much on the CapEx so that uh, there is the margins are kept and uh, you have a better ROC. We are very aware about that and we hope that See, some of our hospitals, uh, when we look at it, has gone to that range of near 30% margin. So that gives us a lot of confidence. So some of the large hospitals we have, and many of these hospitals have gone to about 20% margin. So overall, we feel very confident about the India 
profitability and we think that this is something which will help us to drive better profitability as we go forward. And uh, Alicia, you want to say, tell about it? Yes, sure, Chairman. So, Naman, uh, when you look at the previous quarters, you have a high OP number also because of the PCR visit. So, their uh, per patient collection would be lower because it's PCR collection largely. So, what you're seeing now is our core business, the usual uh, consultation plus procedure, uh, which is the higher, um, which is the higher per patient collection, which is uh, trickling in now. We just haven't been able to bring back the volumes as it was before, uh, but we're seeing Q3 has been very strong and same with Q4. So slowly at least you're seeing the volume, but at least going back to the probation collection that, uh, that used to be part of the core business. So it's a, it's a little bit uh, di uh, different comparisons. Got it, got it. Uh, that answers my question. And just one follow up uh, on the India hospitals. So what are the optimal uh, occupancy rates that we can assume for a business, which is increasing on quarter on quarter basis versus previous years, it has reached around 70%. But uh, what are the peak occupancies that our hospitals can do if there are some ICU or PICU beds which are kept separate? So I just wanted a picture of that. Yeah. Uh, Sunil, you want to answer that? Naman, uh, so if you see currently, right, on the uh, overall, as you said, uh, we are at 68% uh, uh, occupancy uh, at the Indian level, but Kerala is around 80% currently, and Karnataka at 60% and uh, uh, other clusters at around 50%. Uh, when you look at the, what are the peak occupancy, we can go up to 80, 85 easily. Uh, there are certain hospitals where in, uh, for example, in Kerala, they reach even 90% because they create certain holding period by holding beds and then manage the occupancy. So comfortably, without any uh, you know uh, impact on the service excellence, easily we can look at a eighty-five percent occupancy. Okay, and in, uh, as you mentioned, Andhra and Telangana, which are some uh, lower occupancy uh, region for us. So, what initiatives or what are the things which we are doing to reach uh, those segments at a higher occupancy rate? So, yeah. Uh, Naman, there, uh, see, currently, one of the reasons, uh, as chairman, uh, um, you know, told in the initial uh, call, uh, we have stopped the scheme patients, right? The, so we are only currently treating the insurance and uh, certain corporates and walk-in patients. So that is one of the reasons why we are 50% occupancy. But now, already, we are restarting the schemes. Uh, and also, there is a certain outreach clinics which we have started. That is trying to be getting more referrals. Uh, then we are also trying to create certain implant centers with respect to certain speci specialties. So that will have a, a you know, uh, it's a, you know, uh, considering that will have an impact to create a more occupancy there. So, but as I said, uh, if you see, uh, even from the margin point of view, so it has slowly grown. Uh, we expected it to turn around very quickly post COVID. Uh, in the initial quarter, it started with a bit of margin of seven, then went to uh, eight something. Then now we are reached around 10 in the quarter three, but overall it's around nine percentage. But uh, as we said that it's going to go a little slowly, we can't expect a faster ramp up. But we are seeing a you know good growth coming into the future quarters. Got it. Thank you. Thanks for answering my question. That's it from my side. Thank you, Naman. Uh, if there is anyone else who has any question, please go ahead and raise your hands. Okay. Uh, I see no more attendees uh, having their hands raised. Uh, So I think uh, this concludes the earnings call for this quarter for Astridium Healthcare. I thank you all and the management for joining us today. If you have any further questions or queries, please do get in touch with us. Uh, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.